Vedic cosmology presented from the Vaishnava point of view and as based on the Vedas, will find appreciation by real scientists because it has its own scientific basis. Science has always changed over the centuries. One theory after the other has come and replaced the former theory. And what is prevalent, everyone has accepted. But Vedanta doesn't change. Do you say that these modern scientists have found out everything in this universe? They have not uh, explored all the possibilities in the field of cosmology. Only they have explored to some extent. They have seen through this Nalika Yantra or the um, uh, telescopes and microscopes, etc., which are having their own limitations. And people uh, getting the information through limited devices, can they say they know everything? I don't agree with this particular point at all. Kepler put sun at a distance of 30 million miles from uh, Earth, but the modern scientists place the same Earth at a distance of 93 million miles. In 1930, Pluto came into existence. 2006, it vanished. To realize the vision of the Vedic planetarium, Srila Prabhupada wanted a diagram depicting the structure of the universe. To this end, he engaged devotees and artists in drawing maps according to Srimad Bhagavatam. Those three and I was doing maps. We had some big pieces of paper and then after this, I was there for discussions and uh, I would take some notes and then try to make these maps. They were present sometimes while I was making the maps. Other times I would make the maps on my own. And I really, I only think there were about three or four maps in Bumangala. But, uh, so I made this one big, big map. One of the maps was the concentric overview of Bumangala. Simultaneously, Srila Prabhupada sent out leading students to find a competent Vedic astronomer. After extensive searching throughout India, finally on April 30th, 1977, a reputed South Indian pundit was brought to Bombay, India to meet Srila Prabhupada. In the fifth canto, there is a description of the planetary system. Yes, So, we want a diagram. Yes, So, kindly help us. This planetary system is hanging. Yes. Urdha Mula Dhosaka. Same thing is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But how it is hanging and where are defining situation of the planets and Plato's and Deans. So, as far as the book is concerned, uh, kindly make a drive so that we shall enjoy it. And during that summer of 77, Prabhupada had a lot of meetings with him and Tamal Krishna Maharaj uh, to discuss how to do this Vedic planetarium. And they actually sent people out, they tried to get people from South India. There was a lot of effort that was made, you know, to try to get a good concept of how to present it. But they couldn't find anybody who was able to do it at least not to Prabhupada's satisfaction. So it was one of the things that Prabhupada left with us. Srila Prabhupada's desire for the diagram was not to go unfulfilled. That elusive map was discovered by Srila Prabhupada's disciples at the holy village of Melakote, some 50 kilometers north of Mysore, Karnataka in India. This diagram accurately depicted the entire cosmology of Srimad Bhagavatam in an ingenious yet simple rendering. The person through whom it was revealed to the world was the 19th century scholar saint Tiruvenkata Ramanuja G. R. Swami. Born in Sri Purumbudur, Tamil Nadu, Tiruvenkata Swami went on to become an Acharya or spiritual leader in the preceptorial line known as the Sri Sampradaya.
He spent several years of his life in Melakote, which 900 years earlier had been the residence place of Sripad Ramanuja Acharya, the most prominent Acharya of the Sri Sampradaya. At Melakote, in the thousand-year-old temple, Tiruvenkata Swami studied and taught the Vedas and also worshipped the deity of Tiru Cheluva Narayan. One day, while studying the Mahabharat, a 5,000-year-old epic of ancient India, he came across some intriguing verses. In the fifth chapter of Jambukanda, Bhishma Parva of Mahabharat, it is said, Sudarshanam pravakshami dvipastu guru nandana parimandalo maharaja dvipoyam chakra samstita this Bharat Kanda is called Sudarshana Dvip, since it looks beautiful to the eyes of the onlookers. Being circular, it looks like the disk of the Lord and it is attached to cyclic time in the form of a disk presided over by Lord Sudarshana. Bharat Kanda is in the form of a globe since all of its four corners are rounded like the bale fruit. When viewed from the moon, half of Bharat Kanda appears like the rabbit and a small people leaf, while the other half appears in the form of a big people leaf with all of them surrounded by varieties of vegetation. Pondering the verses, he became perplexed. What on earth can a rabbit and people leaves have to do with geography or cosmography? As he sought to understand their meaning, he contemplated, meditated, and prayed. Finally, by divine inspiration, he sketched a drawing of the rabbit and the people leaves, but still remained mystified about their connection with the earth's geography. Suddenly it dawned on him that if the drawing was turned upside down, the rabbit perfectly corresponded with Europe, Asia, and Africa, while the people leaves corresponded with North America, South America, and Australia. These continents comprise our earth, which the Mahabharat calls Bharat Kanda. Vishnu Purana also describes the earth as Bharat Kanda and gives its diameter as 8,000 miles. The earth is also referred to by the name Bharat Kanda in the invocation Sankalpa Mantra chanted by Brahmana priests since time immemorial up until the present day. Vedic cosmology gives descriptions of the entire cosmos, including its subtle features. Perception and access to these subtle features, however, requires karmic qualification. Consequently, much of the cosmos described earlier, as well as parts of the cosmography about to be described, are imperceptible and inaccessible to us earthly inhabitants. Bharat Kanda is one of the nine islands